Hello everyone and welcome to another what I got for my birthday video. It's, uh, yeah, it's pretty late. <laughs> I know, I know, it's namely because I didn't have all the stuff at the time as some stuff was being shipped in. And another part was kind of odyssey and another part was kind of laziness. So <laughs> Let's get it started. USB desk lamp, which I have not quite used yet. Too focused on Odyssey, dang it, so I haven't been, <laughs> haven't really been setting up anything else like this in general. Bob Ross Pez Dispenser, because there can never be too much Bob Ross in your life. To add on to that note, Bob Ross Toaster! You can toast Bob Ross's image in all of your slices of toast whenever you feel like it. Assuming you have bread. A whole beef tenderloin! It's... it's beautiful. I should probably get this back to the freezer. I had to roll it up so it would fit in the camera's area, but a Fortnite t-shirt. My mom was like, I noticed you're into this lately, so I thought I would get you the shirts. And here she is. And now for the gaming stuff. This is a thing that I got for myself, actually. A Nintendo Switch Pro Controller of the Power A Enhanced Wireless Variety. Now you're like probably like, wait, 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 why did you get this instead of just the regular Pro Controller? When I mean, it's got the Amiibo support, it's got rumble, this doesn't have any sort of rumble or anything like that. Well, I'm glad you asked, because you see, this one's D-pad is way, way better, apparently, than the uh, Pro Controller's D-pad, you know, the official Pro Controller, although I guess you could say technically this is official too, because, you know, it's officially licensed seal of Nintendo. Yeah, so, <laughs> so yeah, that, that, but as I was saying about the D-pad on the Pro Controller, a lot of people were saying that they have D-pad issues, and that when you're pressing left, maybe it'll hit up while you're hitting left, or down while you're hitting left, or, yeah, um, you know, I, I, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? And, uh, we don't want to go through that again. Xbox 360 controller! So, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go for this one, because I, like, I don't, I don't really need Rumble, per se, and if I want to do Amiibo stuff, which I don't really do Amiibo stuff in general, I'll just tap it to the Joy-Con anyway. But uh, there's there's a thing that the this thing has that the official controller does not, and that is these remappable buttons on underneath here. It's sort of like how paddles are on the Xbox Elite controller, I guess you could say. Like, uh, what you would do is you would hold this button in the middle until the middle light starts flashing. Uh, oh, wait, wait. Do I have to... Oh, it's, oh yeah, it's not on. <laughs> <laughs> kind of forgot that. Forgot to set that up ahead of time. Yeah, you hold that until the middle light starts flashing. Then you hit the button that you want to map to something else. In this case, I'll do the right analog stick because stick clicks are annoying. And then you press the button on the back that you want to map it to. We'll say it's the left one there, even though it's on the right stick. And suddenly, this is now this. But obviously, you probably want to do it with something else like... Uh, <laughs> Like, something more intuitive, like clicking that and then clicking the back right here. But yeah, this sort of mapping has various advantages in different games. I thought, hmm, that would be, that would be pretty neat to have. Plus, the uh, ergonomics are a lot more comfortable than having the Joy-Cons. Uh, I mean, yeah, the Joy-Cons are okay for the most part. But ones that you have a lot of, like, dynamic movements of all the buttons, your fingers are everywhere, they're kind of tiny. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll get one of these bad boys for those sorts of situations. Or when I just feel like playing old school. One, by the way, it came with 
Energizer, Max, batteries, no generic batteries here. Let me give you a little example of what you can do with the buttons to, say, give yourself a little bit more comfort in certain situations. I'm just in time trial mode because I can mess around here as I please and whatnot. I also gotta stay in frame. But okay, so you know the Y button accelerates, the A button accelerates, B button breaks and reverses, X button looks behind you. But let's say you're not very comfortable rolling your fingers around here like say um, if you're holding the Y button here and you don't want to roll your finger over to the X because you end up releasing the Y button like eh, eh, and then you end up losing speed or something like that. Well, what you can do is get that mappable button all flashing, hit that X button and say the back advanced gaming R button and then we can go ahead, drive forward while looking behind us at any time we please without even taking our finger off the accelerator like a pro. <laughs> That's just one of the uses that you can do with this. You can also map D-pad buttons, so like for shooters, you don't have to bounce between the D-pad and the analog stick on the left side, for instance, you can just map two of those to the underside buttons, uh, which is a handy little dealio there. So, yeah, whatever whatever you can imagine being more comfortable on the back side of the controller, you will be quite pleased with this. Speaking of Mario Kart, Mario Kart 7 on the 3DS. Yeah, I didn't get this for the longest time because I was thinking, and, uh, you know, Mario Kart Wii had that rather annoying everyone gangs up on you deal <laughs> where it's, it's kind of kind of unfair in a lot of cases. And this sort of sort of does have that in a way. But I was like, you know what? You know what? I'll try it anyway. But uh, for the most part, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> so I guess it is worthy. And now something that I talked about in a random gameplay, Super Meat Boy! Like Mario Kart 7, I was like, mm, I don't know if I should get this. Yeah, I heard about some unfair aspects, and yeah, there are definitely unfair aspects in the game. Like a certain, certain level 4 boss, I think it was level 4, where it pounds with fists and swipes with arms and stuff like that, and you just have to last it out, basically as it bonks its head three times, yeah, yeah, that one. But, <laughs> but for the most part, it is fair, it's just really, really hard, and I do like that, in that if a game is fair and it's hard, it's it actually feels like an achievement to beat, you know, that it's not so much memorization as it is pure skill getting through it or and whatnot, just by having the hang of the controls and stuff. And one I have not to mention... Bloodstain, the Ritual of the Night. You probably will recognize this as being like a Castlevania style game, as a matter of fact, that looks quite a lot as uh, the inspiration, let's put it that way. <laughs> In fact, I heard about a certain area about this game. I don't, I haven't reached it yet. I don't know where it is or if it's maybe an optional area or something like that, but apparently it's an area that picks fun at modern day Konami, so <laughs> I was like, oh, PK Gam wants to see that a bit. <laughs> okay, but that, that isn't the only reason why I go on to get the game. It's because I like side scrolling adventure games, you know, like Metroid, uh, as, as you've seen me play before. So I was like, okay, I'll give this a shot, and I am quite enjoying it. <laughs> I had one other game on my birthday list, which was Celeste on the Nintendo Switch, uh, Best Buy limited run version thingy, but it's still in pre-order, and I don't know when it's actually going to be shipped out or anything like that, so technically it's not for my birthday, I guess. <laughs> Speaking of, that's all I've got. So I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video.